Welcome back to Works Garage. In today's video, we will be meeting a few other Mazda 3 turbos, and Justin with Mazda Sauce Tuning will be here today. All right, yeah, I'm Justin Freeman, um, also known as Super Mazda 3 on YouTube, um, and I'm also the Mazda Sauce Tuner. So uh, this is uh, my Mazda 3 right here. It's a 2019 uh, all-wheel drive sedan with cylinder deactivation. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, worry about cylinder deactivation failing, but I've, uh, I've had this car supercharged for over 30,000 miles. Um, no issues with cylinder deactivation. So, um, I mean, how I first got started uh, was with my uh, Mazda 6 I had. I had a 2016 Mazda 6 during COVID. Um, and then I got in contact with, uh, you know, Raf from OVT um, back in the day. So uh, that's how this all started with the Mazda sauce tuning. Um, Raf was my mentor, um, pretty much took me along, kind of showed me some things during COVID. And, uh, you know, we just got along and I started advertising this tuning. And then I came to a point where, you know, there was like a conflict of interest. And, um, you know, I uh, the superchargers were coming out and uh, guys were starting to run them. And I was interested in getting more power because I live at, in Colorado. It's almost 6,000 feet where we're at. So this car um, over here at altitude, it only makes 120 wheel horsepower, right? Um, on a dyno with corrections, it makes 154. But without corrections, you're only making 121 horsepower. And when you take this to the mountains, it's, it's just not enough power. So, you know, um, before, you know, I started uh, the supercharger, you know, I asked, you know, Raf to tune me and, you know, he, he added some power, but um, I noticed when he added power to this car, um, it did not make as much of a difference as it did on my 2016 uh, Mazda 6. And I think it was just more of um, the factory software was different how they tuned the throttle. Um, because as you know, as years goes on, um, they're, they're trying to improve fuel economy. So I noticed in the software that, you know, the throttle had mapping was different from uh, my 2016 so i figured out a way around that and uh you know we, we we got a little bit more power and then you know um i wasn't satisfied so i went on a quest to uh supercharge the car i bought the supercharger um asked raf to to me he's like nah i don't want to do that and pretty much just like uh you know begged him pretty much uh, like months after months of just like begging the guy to do it he finally agreed to um, make a couple small changes that I requested. He didn't actually want to tune the supercharger. I just requested a couple changes and then the, the car improved dramatically. So I said, hey man, like a lot of a lot of people need your help. You know, could you help us out a little bit? You know, so um, that's how it originally got started. Um, and then, you know, I also met John in uh, 2022 um, when I got this, was it 2022? Yeah, 2022. Um, met John and um, he's actually the first person um, that um, I got involved with tuning for the turbos um, in December 2022. So um, it's been a journey. Uh, the, the main issues with these cars is the throttle. No matter if it's the turbocharger model, turbocharged models or the supercharged model, um, there's uh, throttle closure issues. And that was a big reason why a lot of tuners uh, just decided it wasn't worth their time um, to tune these cars because of the throttle. So um, there's been a, at least four or five tuners that have attempted to tune these superchargers, but it is very difficult to find that throttle balance um, because uh, these superchargers are uh, vacuum operated. So you have to find the right amount of throttle to cause the supercharger bypass to close so you can get boost. So that's the you know, main issue with these cars. So um, yeah, obviously here's the car, it's very stock. Um, I don't really have many exterior mods done to the car. Um, you know, a lot of people black out their cars and with the sleeper theme, I didn't want to black the car out because that kind of that kind of promotes that, you know, the car is modified and it's fast. So the car already had chrome, unlike the, the hatchbacks that come with a black grill. These come with the uh, chrome. So I figured, you know, I already got chrome on the grill. There's the chrome on the, the window sill. So I was like, yeah, I'll just add more chrome to the car. Just be, be different. Um, so as far as exterior mods go, that's all I have done is like, you know, the chrome there. Um, I have my wet sports 18 by sevens. I wanted to keep the stock wheel diameter to keep the the suspension geometry is the same because I love the ride quality right now. This car is very dirty, I know. Um, other than the wheels on here, um, I have like those rigid collars that I just installed. 
that helped out the ride quality a lot. Um, still stock exhaust. The only thing I changed on the exhaust is I have a secondary cat delete. Um, yeah, pretty much it. So I got this subtle supercharger badge here from the uh, Cobalt SS. So um, yeah, that's an OEM supercharger badge. But yeah, for the exterior, that's pretty much it. Um, I got um, the the uh, LED tail lights that are on the premium trim, but I only did the outer because I'm not trying to actually be a premium trim, but I just love the look of the full circle LED. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much for the exterior mods. Um, obviously we can pop the hood, turn the car on. Pretty basic setup, pretty cheap too. So my, sh my supercharger was around $3,500 uh, with the smaller pulley, um, HD and green belt. Um, pretty simple intake I made for about 150 bucks. So I switched it out and I got a, the turbo snorkel. The NA snorkel is a little bit different, but uh, yeah, this, this whole setup, not very expensive. Have a lithium battery here that uh, puts out almost 1700 cold cranking amps. So I'll give, you, give it some ribs so you guys can hear. Yeah, very, very simple setup, you know, nothing crazy to it. Um, like I said, the only exhaust mod I have is that secondary cat delete. I have a short ram air intake. Um, the reason why I have a short ram air intake is because, like I said, the supercharger is um, vacuum operated. So in order for that bypass to close correctly, there has to be a change in um, atmospheric pressure. And if I can get the pressure to change quicker, the bypass closes faster. So uh, the car right now currently makes 258 horsepower in front wheel drive. Um, in all wheel drive, it makes 226 wheel horsepower. But what's interesting about this car is when I'm on the road, the all wheel drive system disengages. So I, I'm typically running front, front wheel drive. Unlike the uh, turbo models, turbo models here, the rear differentials are 10% uh, overdriven. So they use more of their uh, all wheel drive all the time versus this car. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I have an LC500 fuel pump, as you know. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the, uh, the full build of the car. There's nothing uh, crazy. Um, without this car, I wouldn't have been able to tune any of the Ford Gens or pretty much any of the Mazdas because um, me with this tuning uh, business, I'm not gonna have someone try something that I haven't tried myself, you know? So um, everything that I give out to customers, I pretty much tested it on my car to make sure it was safe. Um, and that's what's uh, special about my Mazda sauce tuning is I actually own one of these cars. I've owned two Skyactivs and I drive it daily. So anytime I make a change, I, I, I drive it on the road for a couple thousand miles, uh, make sure everything's running right, do logs. Um, so when you guys are getting tunes, um, you don't have to worry about me guessing because um, I'm actually going out there and testing it to make sure I know what's going on. So if you feel something wrong, I probably already experienced it because of you know, me trying the same type of changes on the car. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, hopefully soon I'll be launching my website next month because uh, I've been getting a lot of requests and getting busier. Pretty much all the tunes are done now. The, what I'm working on now is the uh, Pure 500 Turbo. All the, like the NA tune, uh, stock turbo tune, supercharger tunes are all complete. Now my focus is gonna be doing the uh, Pure 500 Turbo and you know, I thought we were gonna be stuck with the JB4, um, but you know, I decided to create my own tables in Mazda Edit, and now um, we don't even need the JB4. So the tuning software is pretty much, um, it's complete and it's capable of tuning the, the Pure 500 Turbo without having to trick the, the ECU. And this was the first sauce tuned Mazda 3. Okay, John, uh, if you'd like to tell us about your, your car. Um, well, it's been about maybe, I don't know, a year and a half since I had it. Uh, had an NA before this, and there wasn't a lot available performance-wise, so I decided to see what I could uh, trade it up for. So flew out to Las Vegas, picked it up, and drove back. Um, two days later, I got everything installed and 
then I met Justin and got it tuned up. And, you know, for the whole 14 months, you know, we've been slowly tuning it to be the best that it could be. And I've got a turbo sitting at home waiting to be switched out, but uh, I've got some, uh, you know, safety things to replace and fix first before having more fun with it. So what, what current mods do you have? Um, so I've got the uh, short ram intake, I've got the yellow jacket coilover suspension, cork sport big brake kit, um, the, got the 80, the 80 millimeter exhaust from cork sport, subs in the back. Um, interior wise there's nothing really changed except maybe some like interior design but I've decided to keep the steering wheel as is. I know a lot of people have seen like the fighter jet style, but I still want to keep the whole, you know, luxury look that Mazda has been doing. Um, I decided to switch out my rims and tires for a wider look. And so instead of the 215s, I've got the 235s. Um, and yeah, I've got the replica rims because, you know, I want to be a bit cheap and save the money for the fun stuff. But, you know, hopefully at some point I uh, can eventually get the rear big brake kit, but that's last on the list at the moment. Yeah, mods, they start adding up, yeah. it gets expensive. They start adding up, you know. I think with all the mods, you know, together, maybe the car is like at close to 50 grand. Um, I know that there are other cars you could probably get for 50 grand that could do more, but, you know, it, uh, cars a little bit more fun and mean a little bit more when you put some more effort into them than when they come out of the factory yeah, made by somebody you, else so yeah when you personalize them I totally agree for sure hope you enjoyed today's video meeting Justin with Mazda sauce and the first car he ever tuned with John, please like and subscribe. Thank you for viewing.